I've done a considerable amount of research on weapons to try and match game equivalents to real-world versions. And the one that always strikes me as odd, well, there's two actually. The first one is the flamethrower, because they never go far enough, and they just, they're never really good enough. They're like, I'm gonna shoot flamethrower out this far. Yeah, right, you got a crap flamethrower. If I'm gonna have flames, I expect it to have some distance to it. The flamethrower in Terraria is actually pretty good. On, it uses jealous fuel, you set it on fire, it goes out like this far from your character, it goes out way further than it, you would think it does, but it's an actual flamethrower, and it shoots flames, or what looks like flames. But the other thing is shotguns. Like this? Hmm... That's probably close enough. As you get further out, the shots get really scattered, and while they do pack a punch, you get more than really close, and it's just not good enough. However, games tend to make the range on shotguns too short. Instead of balancing them against their real world power, they try to balance them for game logic, and they make them so short that they're hard to use, but they have lots of power. And in real life, they have lots of power if you're going to try and shoot something, but they have sometimes three times as much range as they do in games. Most video game gunfights tend to reach no more than 60 meters. Unless you're a sniper. I take it back, even if you're a sniper. Studies have a few hundred feet of range. Yeah, they do. And pistols have a long range on them, too. But if you're going to scale them equivalently, shotguns are scaled down even more than they should be. If close quarters weapons had their real ranges, they would be blatantly superior in 95% of situations. True. You get something like a sword in a video game, and it's like, I am reaching out as far as I can punch. No, they have twice as much range as that. And if you're within 20 feet or 7 meters of somebody, then they're actually there's actually a good chance that you can do better than somebody with a gun if you have a sword or a knife or even unarmed combat. Okay, I'm good. Don't inhale water, it's not good for you. I'm gonna drink my water this time. Ah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I need to go find a pocket of iron somewhere so I can put it in my area. Over there. Now, uh, what can I go attack things with right now? Uh, military, I have grenades, I have armor, I have turrets. I could make a bunch of turrets and then put up a bunch of walls, and then... Hmm, that might work. Let's go get some turrets, six turrets, and get me some bullets. Need some more copper. <clears throat> Am I drowning? No, I'm not drowning. I did turn it on peaceful mode. I couldn't stand the wild dogs that attack so fast. And the red flashing. Oh, the red flashing. <clears throat> the red flashing, oh my gosh. I'm gonna be building walls and I'm just gonna surround myself with them. I'm not a humanoid fish. Right. <laughs> Got armor-piercing rounds. 
Got six turrets. I I ran out of stone over here. Yay! I ran out of stone, and this is full. Good. Okay, so I'm getting enough stone usage out of everything now. <clears throat> if you're on peaceful mode, why attack them? They won't attack you. Because they're right there. Okay, well, because when I put it on peaceful mode, it doesn't delete the old ones, and the old ones are still angry. So everywhere that I have explored and there's animals or biters. Wild dogs are animals, right? Anywhere there's wild dogs or biters, there's going to be hostile ones. It might only be for a moment, but they're there. Let's make a few walls. I don't need that many. I just need enough to block myself and my turrets in. Then I need to go poke at them. <clears throat> I'm going to turn it off in peaceful mode once I get my technology up to shields too. Because those red flashing is the problem, and I can't turn that off. And no, my brain doesn't like that. In the meantime, let's go see if there's somewhere else with iron that I can grab. Maybe I could just grab the little pockets of iron that are out here. How much of the iron up here am I harvesting right now? No, uh, enough of it. There's a pocket of iron up here. Let's go grab this. <clears throat> Seems like an easy thing to make a setting for, but... Hi, trees! Are you gonna be out of the way for me? Yes, you are. This'll do. We're going to... Grab these. Yeah, that'll be good. And we'll go grab this. <clears throat> I'm gonna be coughing up water for a while now. Ugh. Ah. I'm gonna chop down these trees, since I do actually need wood for miners. But I'm not gonna chop down many of them. Just enough to start doing this. <clears throat> Down we go. I get the feeling that I'm not going to be using trains at all in this world. Unless I have to go really far away. I'm not actually opposed to that. Trains were kind of a pain to set up. And I had to make the game be friendly with the trains. Ew. Oh, it doesn't have one. Okay. Well, let's put this here. Coming up. And up again. Can't see. It's not connecting right. Yep. There we go. Do to do. Right there. There we go. Okay, let's connect that there. And... Power. Full power. Get some light in here. There we go. Electric demand is not good enough, but what you gonna do? I need accumulators. For, I need blue science for that. I'm still preparing for blue science. But look at all the iron that's coming out of here now. It's iron. All the iron. Give me all your iron. <laughs> okay. While we wait for that to catch up, I'm going to come down here. Let's see. Where are you going over here? You're doing that. I can just stick you together there. How are you doing? You look like you're just plugging along. Peaceful and calm. You have 7.8k left. Hey, you're gonna be going for a while. Let's see...
you're not getting there far enough. And you're gonna be going for a while. 5.4, 1.5, maybe. I'll just leave you alone for now. Uh, although I do kind of need it to come in here. Like right here. Well then, we can just redirect some of this. Where is Splitter? Aha! Copper and iron. Looks like I used all of it. You love how this chat can essentially go from an educated debate discussion on the multiverse theory to ooh shiny. <laughs> Some people can't handle that. We talk about every single thing that's in the world and now let's go talk about this random thing now. Okay. Splitter. Oh, crud. I'm making bullets. Yeah, look at the influx of iron now. There's iron everywhere. There we go. Iron. I'll have to fix that. Whoop. Later. Blue train thingy. We're gonna put this up like this. Yep, nope. and that's the end of that. Like I need to make this go up higher. Why hate Americans, German peoples? Because it's cool to hate America. Because America is causing wars all over the world. Because when you have bombed a country into oblivion, then you have every right to hate them. reasons, I can certainly find them. Do -do -do. Not all of these apply to Germany, but you can hate them for other countries, too. You think you're lagging. Well, if you think you're lagging, you can always refresh the stream. And if that doesn't fix it, then nothing will. Oh. Did these fill up? They did. Okay. Back you go. You can have your fuel back. Yeah. Fuel. You can have some fuel. And I need a couple chests down here. Cancel. Chesticles, chesticles, limestone in there. It's so cool to hate America that even some of America hates America. <sighs> we can talk politics if you want. But I have some rather strong opinions on that. And it's likely to drive some people away. <clears throat> I've tried skirting around the issues, more or less, but... Uh... What's so bad about socialism? I don't know. America's a socialist country. Maybe you should ask them. <laughs> and if you don't believe me on that, there's 47% of Americans that are on some form of government welfare. If How do you define socialism otherwise? In a dire land, Essenceberry Bushy too. <laughs> In Soviet Russia, vodka drinks you! The iron ore looks fine. I need more of the furnaces. I've got lots of them, never mind. No power, though.
Public schools are technically socialism, are they not? Technically, yes. Uh, it just depends on how, how much you want to get into the socialist side of things. I think eventually we're going to get to a point where no one has a job anymore, or those that do, just, like, the jobs become less important as people progress and we get more and more machines that take over our jobs. We've already got to the point where the only thing that keeps things artificially... <sighs> there are companies that have... They inflict artificial scarcity all over everything. And that's the only thing that keeps the prices up right now. Once that comes tumbling down, because there's just so many things that get made, we're going to see a complete shift in the way that people interact with the economy, with the environment. <laughs> it's like that day and I decided to play Dark Souls for the first time, and we decided to talk about religion and censored. <laughs> I do have to say that the chat did not enjoy Dark Souls very much, so I'm not going to be streaming it again. Unfortunately, I blame all of you for that. Okay, we got this. I'm going to rip these over here. No, it doesn't quite go far enough. Oh, I ran out of those too. Dang it! Okay, well, let's get them going for now. Get my iron ore flowing into iron ingots. Oh, these are plates, aren't they? Technically, an ingot is just a way of storing a metal so that it can be used. I suppose a plate is an ingot, if you want to call it that. I've seen some really fancy ingots, too. Do I play Skyrim? Sometimes. I might play Skyrim tomorrow. Today I wanted to play Factorio. Uh, give me some of these. Oh, uh, here, you can have that back. Where are my conveyors? Right there. And you can have this stone. And you can have the other stone. There you go. You hope the economy changes for the better soon, because you have to go job hunting soonish. There is a fundamental problem with the way that the economy is viewed. Um, the economy is measured by how fast it's growing. And that assumes that the economy is better when it's growing, right? It's always got to grow. It goes towards unlimited growth, goes towards infinite, and... Well, what happens when the entire Earth runs out of resources? Because we've just been trying to grow everything. What happens when robots start taking over jobs? There are general purpose robots that, while they do not work as fast as people do, they work at a lot lower price right now. I, they're still coming along, but you can get robots that do anything you teach them. They don't do it very fast, to be perfectly honest. You probably need a hundred of them to go... Well, that depends on the robot. I think the fastest one I saw was you need ten of them to do the work of one person but they operated at the cost of one hundredth of a person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Laser turrets. Let's do that. Uh, 
Another thing is that our economy has been more or less set up to fail. Uh, there are large people, there are large companies that are trying to crash the economy, the world economy. They're trying to take over the world. No. Um, uh, basically, unless you're in one of the countries that aren't part of NATO, your economy is probably crud. And that's by design. If you just look at it from a larger perspective and you see what's been going on and the decisions that the governments have been making, you realize that there's got to be something for them to be doing so badly. And it, since all of them are doing badly if they're part of NATO and some of the developing countries are doing fine, um, there are BRICS countries that are doing pretty well now, like Russia, what is it, BRICS? What is BRICS? Um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. I know the American government has been taken over by large corporations. They just own the government. And that's been proven. America is an oligarchy. And they seem to have a lot more say in the way that things work around places and... Uh, it's just a big problem. Big old problem. Okay, let's get these out here. General labor will go down over the two, but more management jobs will be required to look over the robots. That is untrue. As the robots get smarter and they get more skilled, there will be less management required of them. When you start getting robots that can watch over other robots, then you start having some serious problems with job openings. People can't work if robots can't do... if robots do their jobs. There's Horses, before cars came around, used to be used by everybody. They were used for travel, they would draw carriages, they would plow fields, and cars roll around and... Well, you have engines that can do work without raising a horse, you don't have to feed it, you just have to put fuel in it, keep maintenance on it, a lot less training, they can also be manufactured instead of bred, and while there are still a few places where horses are useful, you don't see them used on farms or for travel or for in regular life now. They're more pets, or sport animals, or in rare cases used by police in really crowded areas. That's going to be what happens to people. Robots are going to take all of the jobs, and they're not coming back. But nobody really wants to go out into the fields and start picking cotton. Nobody wants to go make clothes in sweatshops. They would rather the robots do it. And the robots won't complain. They, they just make things. They do what they've been programmed to do. <clears throat> There's going to be something that changes. And... Well, it's starting to happen. It just hasn't quite hit critical mass yet. Yep. The research. That's somewhere between 20 and 50 years in the future, though. Although it's not far enough away that it doesn't not affect what we have now. If that makes any sense. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um... There are a lot of jobs that have already been replaced by robots, particularly in the automotive industry. 
Cars are made by specific robots made for specific purposes. Instead of a hundred people putting together a car, there are two people watching over robots. <clears throat> when cars got introduced, there was a new position for mechanics. However, there are a lot less mechanics than there are horses, or people driving. Well, maybe not on the driving. A lot of the people who would ferry people around used to drive carriages. Now they drive taxis or limousines. Anything else there? Energy accumulators number two. Yes. I guess this isn't really a question of if it will happen, it's a question of when. I'm not sure how we got on this topic. I was thinking about how unlimited growth is unsustainable, and then robots are going to take over the world! <laughs> No, but I think there's going to be some time in my lifetime when jobs start to become irrelevant. When you're able to feed everybody and you're able to educate them all. And you're capable of having robots do a lot of the work that people don't need to be doing. You have 50% unemployment because people cannot be employed anymore. Then what? <clears throat> the components that make cars are made by robots, but the cars themselves are put together by people. You know that's what you do. Or, you know because that's what you do. I have a question for you then. In your factory of cars, or wherever you're working, how many human workers do you have? And how many robots are there? That's the real question, isn't it? How many robots versus how many people are there now? Okay, well, it looks like we're getting lots of iron. Let me go grab some of these. About 600 people and about 200 robots. You sound like you have one of them old-fashioned factories. <clears throat> Although... It could just be that not all of the jobs are replaceable yet. Three to one, people, the robots. The robots make the chassis, but the people put stuff into that. Okay, so robots haven't completely taken over the automotive factories yet. Do you think that one day, maybe sometime within the next five years, they might take over some of the jobs that exist there right now? You're in a position to say yay or nay. Stone. Let's pop up here. As far as the economy goes, um, I'm not sure what all to say on that. I've done a bit of my own analysis on the economy, but all I could really say about it was that... My analysis was incomplete, because I didn't have enough data to deal with that. <clears throat> it's too complicated to work with the current level of technology. So we're not going to see robots anytime in the future. Or near future. It'll be the long term future. And general purpose robots aren't... 
cheap enough to be mass produced yet. So, let's just see them sometime in the future. Do -do 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 -do. Flow. Iron flow. <laughs> Oopsie. Looks like I'm actually having a bit of problems here. Let's do something like this. Oop, that way. No, down. There we go. You can plug yourself in there instead of the other way around. Give it 30 to 50 years, and yes, it's possible that robots will replace you. Okay, so maybe too far off in the future to be affecting things currently. Mm. <clears throat> it's starting to happen, but it's happening at a rate that people are capable of adapting to. Oh, I gotta plant these... What else? I think I've run out of things to say on this topic. Let's try a different one. Unless somebody else has some different way that we can go on this topic. I just hope you're able to get a job when the time comes. Uh, people will still find something to do. They might turn to artwork, or improving themselves, or they might turn to trying to make better robots, or something. Somebody will figure out some way to, to contribute to society, and it may not be a hard skill like making widgets, or making gears, or whatever it is. Right now people are treated more or less as cogs in a machine to make products. I think that's what's going to change. Sometime in the future people won't be treated as part of their product line. They'll be treated as people. Am I still going to role play Skyrim on YouTube? No. I'm not going to do anything with YouTube. I have had it with YouTube. The videos take too long. YouTube... Google implemented a uh, a copyright system that is just terrible, very restrictive, completely uh, benefits all of the companies uh, unfairly. It's just not good. Do I play Kerbal Space Program? I have played it in the past. I don't have a copy of Kerbal Space Program. I would be interested in streaming it if somebody wanted to buy me a copy, though. Oop, no more of that. This really needs faster. Faster. It needs faster. I'm just saving my streams on YouTube for all eternity. Yes. I think I need to start getting this blue science up. <clears throat> the point of Factorio is to make a giant factory. You're supposed to deal with the logistics of scale and expansion and progress and technology. You're supposed to continually make new things and continually expand your base so that... Well, I started off with science. And I've got some power over here. And then I've got my ores processing. And here's some inserters, and down here there's a whole nother section for making circuits, and more inserters. There's an oil processing area. And this is the point. Make yourself a factory, and try to progress. The new version of Careful Space Program was released about six hours ago. So that's why people are interested in it. There's been a couple of questions for that today. Again, if somebody wants to buy me a copy of Kerbal Space Program, I will stream it. 
If nobody buys me a copy, then I will continue with Skyrim or Factorio. What are my thoughts on the supernatural? The ghosts, demons, etc. Mm. Well, I currently have... Let's see, I'm looking over at my bookshelf right now. I have a Bible, I have a Quran, I have... Here, let's walk over here for the Factorio for a moment. There's the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Here's something about Inanna, Irish folklore. Where's my Dampada? Dampabana? What's the name? One of the Hindu books. The Dham... Dhammapada. My thoughts on religion are that... No. In fact, Supernatural? My thoughts on religion and Supernatural are intertwined. Um, because some of these talk about things like demons and angels, and some of them talk about creatures that... Leprechauns! And banshees, and... Some of them have some basis in what people have observed. They were trying to rationalize what they've seen out in the world. But there are some things that they genuinely can't explain because people aren't just physical beings. People have the ability to look at other densities, other dimensions. Like right, right now we live in the, I think it's the lowest density. The, the density that has the first, second, and third dimensions. And there's the one above that is four, five, and six. And there are beings and creatures that live in that plane. And some of the people seeing supernatural things are looking up there. There's... It's not really about higher or lower, it's about less dense and more dense. On this dimension, we happen to be in one of the most dense places. Shush you, I can't think of that. Um, the, the origin of demons is actually the angels in the Bible. The ancient Jews did not know anything about demons. There's things about angels with four heads and six wings. Um... Angels that could be reliably described as demons, as we think of them now. The devil is supposed to be the main demon, right? Although the devil and Lucifer are two different beings. And Lucifer is the bringer of light. Although he represents duality and separation. I think a lot of what people think is ghosts are probably fourth dimensional beings. The astral beings that, well, people are capable of looking. Every time you dream, you wander around in the astral plane. And what they're seeing as ghosts or such is that. And when you die, you still exist up there. So that would be a ghost. A lot of people just move on. They go up to the next density. Some of the ones that get stuck are ones trapped by either beings that have them locked here, or maybe they just really don't want to leave. They have things left to do. But those are rare. If you recall ju correctly, in Judaism, Satan is actually God's servant who judges humans on their piety. That sounds about right. Satan... As Satan was cast out, he was, uh, he was supposed to be God's right-hand man and then decided that he wanted to be God or he wanted to overthrow God or he wanted to turn people away from God or something like that and God went no leave and threw him out 
<clears throat> Lucifer and Satan are two different beings in Judaism, huh? Well, that explains things. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that Christ doesn't actually exist. Like, there might have been a person who represented that, but Christ is either uh, an old myth, the myth of Horus and the myth of Christ, or Jesus Christ, are pretty much the same. You got three kings up in the sky, and there's a cross, and there's other religions that have the same sort of myth. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that are in the Bible are contradictory as well. My conclusion was that there was two gods, or maybe three. I, there was definitely two in the New Testament, and maybe a third one in the Old one. There's a god of love, and do unto others as you would do unto them. Love everyone as you would love yourself. And there's a god of, I'm going to kill everybody. Death and vengeance and goat lambs. Goat lambs. Uh, goats with seven horns. And pour the wrath into the bowls of revelation. Get fire and brimstone. Kill everybody. Take over the world. <sighs> Yeah, I I have some of the other seminal texts of other religions just so I can see how close or how far away they appear to go. And from what I can tell, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam seem to have the same source. They seem to have diverged, and if you look back in the past at... Um... But back in the past, back to where they started from, it's like three brothers, or three sons, went off and did different religions. Yeah, just different people went different ways and did different things. I'm not particularly superstitious. In fact... I believe that if you look at something, try to identify it rationally, try to identify it spiritually, and try to fit in what it's trying to do, then you can determine what it is. I do look at things from a spiritual pr perspective, even though I'm not particularly religious. I do believe that God is not an entity or a being, God is closer to the source. We all exist within God, and the people that want to reject God are just walking away, trying to find where they're trying to go, what, that, what they want to do. Islam, Judaism, and Christianity are collectively called the Abrahamic religions due to their similarities. Well, that makes sense. Uh, a lot of the Eastern religions seem to be based on either the wisdom or the, the talking points of certain people, like Confucius or was it the Dalai Lama. Whoever started Buddhism. And Irish folk tales are a bit different. I'm not sure what to think about those yet. A lot of that is about supernatural things, and that's where a lot of, uh, like, the fairies come from. Fairies come from a different plane of existence and you can be spirited away to the fairy realm and then you can see fairies and they have to count grains of sand or sugar if you drop them on the floor <laughs> some of these are fun to play with but there's a lot of them that I don't believe exist in the way that they've been portrayed
What are you not doing? You've got circuits right there. You've got two, and you've got nothing. Oh. I see the problem. This, this isn't going anywhere. Are we talking fairies, 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 pixies, or fairies? I think we're talking fairies. <laughs> Christianity sent from the followers of Jesus Christ post-mortem. They don't actually believe in a Jesus Christ. I believe in something called Christ consciousness. And that's really when the, the level of consciousness on the planet comes back to somewhere that it was before. It's like people are... people are on a, a third dimensional frequency and they should go up higher to get up to the next density. I'm not sure about that. I need to do more research and more... I need to ask some of my other parts what exactly is going on. The more I ask, the more I learn, and the less some of the religions and the control, control structures have over me. <sighs> if I have any questions about Judaism, please ask. Let's see how well a Jewish day school Jewish day school student can answer questions. What is the least human angel? in Judaism. That's my question. Who was the least human one? <laughs> that should be a pretty good question, right? pretty sure that some of the angels originated, or the demons originated as angels, and they're just real freaky. The cherubim are just, what the heck is this? The least human, it is kind of not applicable. Uh, angels aren't really human to begin with, are they? A lot of them look relatively human. I guess that's what I'm getting at, or the question I'm asking. Which of them look the least human? Talking about religion on the internet never ends well. All the real information is drowned in propaganda and false information. <laughs> I don't have an argument for that. For or against it. Because it's not really something I can argue with. And that's part of the problem. You're supposed to believe. You're supposed to have faith. But faith has been subverted into something else entirely. Faith is not what it used to be. I have faith in a lot of things. If you go by some of the older definitions of faith. I do not have faith in religion. Few angels are ever even named in the Old Testament. Interesting. The only thing I've seen about angels outside of religion is something about the Archangel Michael Matrix. That seems to be uh, 12th density. No, 4th density. 12th dimensional version of somebody? I think everybody's got one of those. We have the person, and then we have a soul, and then an oversoul, and then an avatar, and then a reishi. Well, the reishi gets uh, kind of weird. The avatar would be the Archangel Michael Matrix. 
upgraded energy. I gotta get something. Let's research that. <clears throat> this is turning into Dark Souls chat. We're all robots. <laughs> well, we actually started talking about it in the place where I can actually think instead of play the game. Well, I'm kind of doing both. Only kind of, though. Uh, doing a pretty good job of doing both, actually. Let's see. I'll put you over here. You're gonna go together like that. You were named after the Archangel Michael. Is your name Michael? Have we found a Michael? Is there a Michael in the audience? <laughs> Whoopsie. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now I need some iron. Steel. Oh, that should be easy. Let me grab these. Most of the mention of the angels comes from books compiled after the Torah, such as the Talmud, Prophets, Writings, Psalms, Kabbalistic Writings, Rabbinic Teachings, Orla, Mishnah, Gemara, and Old Testament. Is the Old Testament after the Torah? Is that how that works? I was never really sure. I might need a Torah if I'm going to go research all the religions. What are my thoughts on human bodies having souls that aren't human? Human bodies don't house souls very often. Most human bodies house individuals, and there are 12 individuals across multiple universes that form a soul. And then there are, well, there's 12 of them. And then there's 12 souls that form an oversoul. And then there's 12 oversouls that form an avatar. There's very few souls that actually incarnate into a body. They don't need to. Um, most of the... Th most of the beings that incarnate into human bodies are... You'd probably call them alien. There's a lot of lizards, there's a lot of... people that look like humans. Humans are pretty dang common. Um... Yeah. I mean, we're all human. You're in a human body, you're gonna be human. Just because your soul is a bit different doesn't mean you're not. You take on a human body from someone else on the other hand and they're gonna have problems. Let's just pull this over here. The Old Testament is the Torah. There is no newer thing for it, huh? Old Testament is the Torah, no doubt about it. You've never heard anyone speak of oversouls or avatars, etc.? Well... Once upon a time I found out about other parts of me that aren't connected to this particular... Not connected to this area here. Like, not connected to my physical body. They're... Ah... Uh, it's usually called the higher self. It's not really a higher self. It's like a less dense one. It's no higher or lower there. It's more like closer to the outside or closer to the inside. I mean... If you are in America, and you see people over in China, you're gonna call them lower, because 
it, you can dig straight down and end up in China, right? But then you can do the same thing from China over to America. So the Americans are lower to the Chinese. And, oh, take like a big sphere and you go outward or inward. Anyway, everybody has one of these. Well, they have a soul that they can talk to. You're actually part of it. It's part of you. You're one and the same. And you, if you're, if you know what you're doing, you can actually ask questions and you can talk to it. It's usually not male or female. That seems to be uh, a human thing. You might doubt it until you have some science. You're going to doubt what I'm saying until you have some scientific evidence, huh? Well, then take it as religion, because this is what I believe from my own searching and from my own asking questions. I do know that almost everybody has the capability of asking other parts of themselves, usually known as the higher self, uh, what's going on and what they know. And they're going to know very different things from what you know most of the time. And if you ask them the right questions, or they're willing to share information with you, then you could actually learn things. There are scientific reasons for this to happen. It's not unprovable, it's just too many people are thinking wrong, they're looking for physical evidence, like the brain has to be the thing that controls your mind. No, that's not it at all. The brain acts more on a quantum level than it does, or the mind acts more on a quantum level than it does on the physical one. Your brain is more of a conduit than a an end-all be-all of communication or thinking. I like to think of religion as the why, where science is the how, and you can combine them together. If you take out the control structures from them anyway. Science, or religion, for, for a long time in the past, and still today, acts as a way of controlling people and making them do things. There are some common sense things like don't kill people, because killing people makes us not able to survive as well, and don't steal from each other because they're, they're likely to get angry at you and you want a nice, good society. But, oh yeah, now I'm explaining it. Don't kill people. Don't steal from them if you can help it. Try to be nice to each other. Try to love everybody. But, oh. Beyond that, it's just about people organizing themselves and trying to some people want to control others. Couldn't tell you why. Well, I could tell you why. I could tell you every single reason why, but that's a different topic. Science can explain religion sometimes. What do you do when the religion starts explaining the science? <laughs> it's not the other way around. It's religion explaining the science. We know this happens, but why does it happen? Because this and this happened, and, but I really think that you could combine science and religion. They're not separate like we like to think they are. At least not completely. Spiritual science. Trying to get answers out of incorporeal beings can be quite interesting. I suppose you could say that. What are we doing over here? I'm gonna make this go straight up. Pick up all this. Isn't that what Scientology does? Scientology is a way of deceiving people. It's another control structure. You get something that is not a control structure and you can talk to me about it. <laughs> whoa, 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 no, 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 bad, bad. I don't want those on my thingy. Don't do that. 
Science at one point said f blood didn't flow. Wow, that's pretty bad. Blood doesn't flow. It simply is one of the humors. That depends. There's there seems to be two branches of science. There's Western science, or no, this is medicine. Never mind. There's Western medicine and there's Eastern medicine, and the two don't always get along. Eh, it doesn't matter. I'm making blue science now. Blood doesn't flow, it uses... Blood doesn't flow. It uses osmosis and reverse osmosis to slowly travel. <laughs> but seriously, I'm making science now. Science! This is quite appropriate music for this. <laughs> I like how this game just abstract, abstract science into bottles. There's nothing else. There's just I'm making science. How are you making science? In a factory. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, I need to get the science up here. Oh man. Maybe I should move this so the science goes down there. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, yeah, let's just pick it all up. Not doing any of the science. You blame American education on the fact that a sizable portion of Americans can't point out the rough location of the nation's capital on a map of the country. Does that really matter? Does it matter where the capital is? Unless you're planning to go to the capital, does anybody really care about where the capital is? Does it really matter? I mean, sure, you know it's way over there, but it'd be more interesting to know why it's over there. Not just, hey, it's over there. Yeah, okay, now what? It's over there! It's over there! Yeah, okay. I have lots of random facts. Ducks don't quack unless they are next to other ducks. Yeah, you like that? This is a true fact. I have proof for this. Watch Mythbusters and look at their quacking. <laughs> Dang, ducks wouldn't cooperate until they got two ducks next to each other. You know how useful that information is? Not really. Unless you're a farmer, then you know why they're quacking. They're like, those two ducks are gonna breed. We need to stop them. Yep. Well, I'm gonna put my science over here. You wanna get something more suitable for a discussion like that? Let me know. It's really not important whether some people know geography and whether others don't. Go down. If your father is called Union and your mother Garlic, you can't help it that you stink. <laughs> ah, wow. I'm just going to pick up all this. We'll put it in one of the science things. Or in all of them. Do, 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 do. I am quite biased against American school systems. They don't actually teach people skills. They teach people to memorize information that they're not going to remember anyway. They also have people sitting down all day so they don't... They aren't engaged in anything. Um, it 
seems like people are taught to be obedient worker drones and not to have critical thinking skills. And it's the amount of education given is constantly less over time. People are retaught and retaught and there's a reason the American education system is how do I put it? It's getting worse. It's not getting better, it's getting very much worse and worse over time. And that seems to be by design. That's what the government wants out of it. I look at other countries' education systems and I'm like, wow, they're doing all these nice things and they have people doing actual learning and things and over here nope nada nope nope all the nope <clears throat> no applied knowledge being taught yeah I need some stone where's my stone at I think it's up here that's what China and India are for, right? Yeah. I even remember things in school about them teaching us brain drain. People would come to our universities over here and then go back to their own countries. And they would take all of the knowledge that they had learned back to their homeland. They don't do that anymore. They don't come to our universities because they're way overpriced. They don't... Well, they don't do anything. Our education system is being outsourced. Damn it. I have revealed myself as an American. I need to go shoot myself now. <laughs> I may not know how to raise good kids or have a great family, but I remember how to solve a polynomial function. And that right there is the problem. No practical skills, hardly anything you can apply to real life. You get thrown out into the world and the reason they want experience out of high school people now is because they don't make good workers. There's no practical application to that. They might be diligent and they can do anything, but they don't make good workers even though that seems to be what it's going for, and the only other option that it could be is to try and make dumb people. If you look at it from the top level and ask why they're doing that, they either want diligent workers or dumb people. Probably both. Somewhere in between. They want people that do their work, do it efficiently, do it like robots and don't complain. They want to make people in the robots. They want to make people in the robots. The American school system is designed to turn people into robots. I am going to remember this for all time now. <laughs> I wish I were joking. I really do. Good night, Shadow Walker. Hope your internet's working tomorrow. <laughs> America converting living beings into dead robots. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Boop. Ran out. Well, I'm actually getting my blue signs in here, 
So I'm actually making progress, and I can start researching blue science things. <sighs> I keep running out of these conveyors. Should probably set up something for red ones. I'm getting lots of iron now. In fact, I should go see what the... the first thing that's likely to run out of equipment is. Over here, what do we have? We have we have steel being manufactured at a good rate. We have batteries going along. We have these inserters being made. And we have circuits. I have lots of circuits. Oh, do I have circuits? Okay, blue science. I want an accumulator. Can I finally make one? Where's the accumulators at? Ah, ah, advanced oil processing. That! I wanted that earlier. How are we doing on batteries? <laughs> the first thing I'm going to run out of first... The first thing I'm going to run out of first is power. Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Plenty of batteries. Why do you have... Ammo, 50. These are ammo now. I did not realize this. Okay, let's go put up the rest of my science. I want full science power going on here. Wait, my science labs are down here? I moved them. More science. We need more science. Here, you can have all the science packs I just picked up. There we go. Batteries are ammo for lasers, apparently. Looks like I'm getting enough green science, and enough red, and maybe enough blue. I could probably put in more manufacturing things for that, though. more blue science. I always seem to be low on blue science in this game. Especially later on. Like right now is not so bad, but later? Oh my. Here we go. And blue science it up. There we go. Shiny laser rifles. Can we has eventually? <laughs> ah, I need to take a short break. I need to shake a break. Here's my factory. Uh, let's get a good spot. I will be back in a moment. Okay, 
don't know how much longer I'm going to stream, because usually when I stop, it looks like my science got done. Um, oil processing is done. Which of these would be good? Mining drills. Bigger mining drills would be good. It takes a lot of science, though. Let's see if there's something else that would be more appropriate at this point. Armor crafting three gives me basic modular armor. That would give me shields. Give me that. Trains. I'm not setting up a train thing. I'm setting up, uh, oh, my pollution. Pollution everywhere. <laughs> I haven't been attacked for quite a while, I gotta say. Uh, probably because it's unpeaceful. I'm going to turn that off sometime after I get shields. Go. What power armor? Definitely with power armor. There we go. The science lab seems to produce their own light. Not much room for shields in there. Link up with your flashing red issue. Definitely. I can put solar panels in there. And I can put in a couple shields, which would help a lot with the flashing red issue. Then I can put down walls, and then I can put down turrets. Put down laser turrets. Rita was not my name in Martian. My name in Martian is Meridiwen Terrell Dio. It's not Rito. I have no idea what you're up about, but that's definitely not it. Sheesh. How are we doing? Whoa, these are full. Lots of oil. All the oil. Wait, I researched the oil processing, didn't I? Give me chemical plants. Yeah, we're full on this stuff. I need to crack it. I'm gonna crack me some oil. Probably just about empty here, huh? Yeah. It's a, you're not getting any of that done. Oh. Okay, let's put that away. And that, and that. If you get armor going, work on the seagulls? What? Seagulls? What the heck is that? Charger. F mod. That's a charger thing. I don't know what it does. Why is that damaged? Mining drill. Uh, let's make a mining drill and see what it does. Okay, well, let's get a cracking. Let's see. Drag you down here, and we'll drag you over here and that there. And we can feed that back in there. Need some pipes. Pipes. My angel takes a long time to make. No power. No problem. There we go. You. Heavy into the light. And then that light into petroleum. And then the light I have into petroleum. Yes. Oh, you need water. You need water. Ah, uh, hey, water. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Well, in that case, let's grab this. Move you down a bit. Water. Whoops. Heavy to light. You think of them as... You think of the biters as seagulls. Ah. Makes sense. Sort of. Okay, look at that. Power armor. I want to research all of the... The things that go with that now. Great. I need you to come up here. I wanted to connect these two together, but no. There's that. And 
There's that light oil. And then we could just connect all this together. Oop, they're already working. They're already working. Yes! It's working! Not the biters. The wild dogs, maybe? Get repairs. Repairs. Did I make a repair kit? Nope. Repair. That didn't repair enough. Are you kidding me? Again. There we go. Aha. And that's a solar panel. I need a shield. Research. Then we'll need a battery. The robot drone things. Oh. I call those robots. <laughs> I know what you mean. The robots. Sorry. Okay, that's going up. This is going down. Perfect. That should be good for now. Can I make my armor? Combat. Oh, I need processing units. Oh, that needs lubricant. Oh, that's a pain. I think that's made in a chemical lab. Chemical plant. Um, while I'm thinking about it, there is one other thing that I believe that's rather important. I believe that people have the ability to choose their own reality directly. Now, everybody has the ability, so everybody is choosing their own reality. And it is everybody's reality that's interacting with each other. So it's not just your personal reality, it's everybody's reality. But if we all decided to do something, then everybody would be able to change it to what they wanted it to be. That's still not... Um... Did I not connect this? I didn't connect that one. There we go. I reject your reality and substitute my own. It doesn't work like that. It's not your reality, it's everybody's reality. And you can change your little corner of it if you try hard enough. There are things that you have to do. You have to be willing to work with the systems that are already there. Like, everybody's got a body. And you need to keep your body in good condition. You can't fill it full of junk. You could... Tell your body not to fill itself full of junk, or try to process that better. If you think about it hard enough, also known as the act of meditation. Meditation means thinking. But if you think about something hard enough, it becomes true. You get more people thinking about it, it becomes true faster. You get more people thinking about it than that, and you can start changing things. Like, literally changing them. <laughs> Yes. Okay, you can make lubricant for me, right? That requires heavy oil. Okay. Make me lube. We'll go from... You can change the entire fabric of reality to... I'm going to make lubricant now. <laughs> ah. And I want a whole barrel of it. Does this mean the orcs are right? Fear the power of the... Terraria is the best game ever. I'd meditate that. <laughs> I could see that, though. Uh, what do we need to make better processing units? I know we need something for that. Intermediate products. We need sulfuric acid. Which I happen to be making over here. 
I needed lubricant for something. I'm just gonna fill up a, a bottle with it. Um, research portable fusion reactor. That won't be good until I get my power armor. Go for power armor. That's what I'm doing now. Have I ever played a Legend of Zelda game? I've played most of them. I haven't played all of them all the way through. My favorite one would be Twilight Princess. And my favorite weapon in Twilight Princess was the ball and chain. It was so nice to just pull the thing out of your hat. And it's bigger than your head, and then you just oof, 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 everything explodes. Not quite, but it was really nice to swing that big honking thing around. It was my main weapon for everything that you didn't need a sword for. <laughs> I always like the big heavy weapons whenever I play a game. I gotta say. I always like big, powerful, strong death and destruction. And more death. Did I mention death? I don't think I did. More death! You need green circuits. And you need green circuits. Give me that. Give me processing units. Why am I carrying around inserters? You can have some inserters. Wait, no, you're the one that wants inserters. And you need circuits. Not making enough circuits? I, I, what's with the iron? Why is there no iron? Is all the iron getting stolen for steel? There should be more iron than that, though. It's not like I ran out. Or did I run out? I ran out. No, I ran out of iron. I have no power. You have no power here. This has no power. This has no power. No power in the network. Oh. Well. Whatever I disconnected here is the problem. Are you working now? Now you're working. Okay. We have 20k left in that one. I didn't think I was out. Are you working? You've got power. And this one was really bothering me. Yes, it's working. Yeah, that's why I should not be out of power. Look at this. 29k. 23. 39k from that one miner. I should have at least 200,000 iron ore left to go through. Which probably still isn't enough. You used to play RuneScape until you got scammed and then banned because the scammer reported you for scamming them? Wow. Now to make a lot of blue transport belts. That's what I was making lubricant for, wasn't it? Well, let's get the iron flowing back again. I want to get this up in here. Might grab the red circuits and pull them out over here. Oop. Let's grab these. I'll just run this along there. Yeah. Like that. And... Hmm. How do I get things out of there? I use the long-handled inserters. There we go. Put that away. And we'll have power. Power. I'm out of... Electric poles. Get over there. And you come up over there. Oop, don't reach. Dang you, power! Why are you never where I need you to be?
star. Well, hey, no, the power, the power has just out. Who did the thing? No. What's going on here? What goofed? What did the thing? I should not be out of stone. Well, I shouldn't have a backup of stone. Where's my power at? Right here. Why do you have so much stone? I'm using all the stone. Why are you that backed up? Oh. I'm not using the stone properly. That box must be full. Okay. We're gonna go with, uh, steel chest. And the sun comes out. Why are you not pulling out? That's what she said. Yeah, well, just keep going on. That's what we're, we're doing. There we go. Yeah, stone, out of here. So we slowly get more electricity out of this. I was supposed to make accumulators. Lots of them. Mark 2 accumulator. Energy capacity is 10. And this one is 5. But this one takes advanced circuits. Let's make lots of accumulators. And I need a substation. I haven't researched substations yet. I'm researching power armor. Oh well. I will set up something temporarily. And by temporarily, I'm going to just shove you everywhere you want to go. Got a small biter corpse. There we go. It's a perfect way to put down your accumulators, right? Dar. Now let's go take all the solar panels I don't have and put them up. You must construct the digital pylons. Spawn more overlords! We require Vespian gas. I done you for that one. Ah. How's the power doing? Now it's up to maximum. That's just sucking down power like nobody's business. Well then. Do -do -do -do. Whoops. I thought that would be right there. Is that off of it? Yes, it is off of it. The whole thing's off of it. There we go. Nope. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> is chat finally catching up to what I said? can't look at the solars? Why not? But they're lovely. <coughs> I tried inhaling water again. <coughs> Yay. Not as bad this time, though. But the solars are nice. See? They make power. I don't have... Oop. Power armor. Give me power armor, too. It requires alien technology, which requires rocketry. Let's do something more productive, like armored automobilism. We all know that solars are just a big barcode. <laughs> oh my. <clears throat> the 
gonna put that there, and you I'm gonna put here. Yeah. We're gonna have a chest here yeah, out of steel. And you have this there. This, that, and the other thing. And you're gonna make me nothing, because I don't have the sulfuric acid set up yet. Great. Okay. Well then. Let's see. You're gonna go there, and you're gonna go there, and pipes. Pipes are done. Now, we just need this to connect down here, where my sulfuric acid is. Oops. Going down. Although, maybe I should just go around. Yeah, just go around. Going over here. And some more. And more. More, I say. More! Give me more pipes. Put you over there, so I can put these two over here. And sulfuric acid is somewhere down here. Where is it at? Oh, it's over there. Okay. Sulfuric acid comes out over here. Oh, dang it. Need one more pipe. Clean my pipes. Do do do. And voila. You go there, get rid of these. Get a couple more pipes. Sulfuric acid is flowing. Flow. Flow. There we go. Anybody else have any other uh, conversation topics they would like to explore? It's the middle of the night. I should go see how my power is doing. Oh man, production. Really, really low. I need more accumulators. I'm gonna cancel this. I'm going to research... Maybe I've already done it. No, I haven't. I'm gonna research substations so I can put up solar panels and I can put up um, accumulators right next to it. Speaking of, the power just went out. Do we get any spoilers for your new game? Genre, what makes it stand out, etc. Hey, the power came back on. <laughs> Just really, really slowly. I haven't been working on my game very much. I've been trying to figure out what I want to do. Like, I've tried some things, and I've tried prototypes, but none of them quite fit what I wanted to do. I'm not just wandering around listlessly doing things. I'm actively searching for something to find the same sort of spark as when I start long projects. When I started Tinker's Construct, I... Wait a minute. Are these tertiary? Or primary? It's gotta be primary. I don't know. <clears throat> I looked for something that I wanted to do, and something that I could spend a lot of time on. And I've made little games. I've made prototypes of little games, and some of them work well, some of them don't. Sometimes I want to do the work on them, and sometimes I don't. I want to find something that I can spend a lot of time on when I do actually get there, though. This game is not a headache, unless you don't think very well. This is about logistics and scale and planning. 
If you just want to go bash things over the head, this is not the game for you. It's not particularly a headache, per se. And I need you to make more of the solar panels. Rip off all the circuits. Yeah! I'm gonna limit you to one stack of solar panels at a time. How goes the game? Well, I've got some sprites, and I've been experimenting with different behaviors and different types of things. I do not think that I want to make a type of strategy game. At least not from a top-down perspective like this. I think I kind of want to make a platformer with some strategy elements in it. And I want to do things with color and... Hmm. I'm in the research phase, where... I'm trying things, trying to get the right idea, and trying to make it go on where it's supposed to go, and not anything else. Like, there's some things you just look at them and you know that they work, and some things don't. I may have the wrong aesthetic, I may have the wrong ideas or preconceptions for going into this. Farming sim, please. <laughs> Question for the chat. How many of you have played Harvest Moon? I said Arc Age wrong. Arc Age is a grind fest that should not be played by anybody who wants any engaging content. The first hour or two were fine, but after that you're gonna find that you just go kill the same thing over and over again. Kill X to do Y. Yeah, I'm not impressed at all. Mm. Now I'm thinking. I'm just watching this factory do its thing too. Okay, so a lot of people in chat have actually played Harvest Moon. What would you think about something that went more in depth with the crops. Maybe you could breed the crops or maybe there was something else you could do. Maybe it wasn't just harvest moon. Like you pick up crops and you go find the girl of your dreams, which is just one of the girls in the village. Um the Harvest Moon seemed to be more about there were multiple ways to play that game, actually. And depending on which game you're playing... Mm. You'd like to breed crops. You'd like to breed a potato with a tomato and get a tomato? Which is actually just... a plant that has little tomatoes and little potatoes. Like you get little cherry tomatoes on the stalk, or the flowers, and then you get potatoes as roots. And you can actually do that. They don't produce as much of either plant on their own, so they aren't worthwhile, but they are an interesting curiosity. <laughs> you just make a piranha plant? Well, it wouldn't be... I wouldn't just have you sit down and breed plants to breed plants. I mean, sure, you could do that if you wanted, but maybe there would be something to interrupt the gameplay. Like, Factorio has these biters that you have to deal with every so often. There's got to be some sort of challenge other than... Other than just sitting there and waiting. I don't like passive gameplay. At all. I want engaging gameplay. And there's got to be something for you to do while you wait for your plants to grow. I've thought about this a few different times, and there are multiple kinds of games that I want to put together, but I'm not sure how. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm getting ideas. 
Ah, the power's out again. Eh, dang it. Contest for crops? That'd be one way. Or maybe you are breeding plants that go attack things for you. You're breeding man-eating... Man-eating crops. Man-eating crops. You're breeding something. Harvest Moon meets Plants vs. Zombies. Meets Minecraft. Oh. Uh, there's some of these things that you could do really well in a 3D world. And they don't work very well in a 2D world. Although, there's a flat world like this, and Factorio works really well. And maybe... Come to think of it, I'm thinking of StarCraft now, and StarCraft 2 is in a 3D world, but it's still flat. It's just got layers that go up and down. Pokemon plant version with real breeding. <laughs> You've been dying to see any kind of farming game because Farmville works, but the wait time frustrated you to no end. Well, Farmville was designed in such a way that it was literally addicting. They would punch all of the bright brain centers so that you would keep coming back for more. There wouldn't ever be a burnout phase where you're like, oh, I played the game too much, I gotta go do something else. It would forcibly stop you to, from playing the game. Oh, crud. <laughs> Plant version mascot. Gardevoir named him Dio. <laughs> Ah, I'm getting into some of the later research now. Let's do upgraded mining drills. Now, I think I need to go now. I need to hash out some ideas. Um, I have something in mind and I really need to go take a look at it. So, let's save the game. I might tell you all about it tomorrow. In fact, let's play Factorio tomorrow. Or should we play Skyrim? We will play either Factorio or Skyrim tomorrow. And if it's not tomorrow, it'll be the next day. And if it's not then, my arm's missing. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again next time.